Let us hear a word of good news in the Gospel of John. The Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him, but to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This is he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law was indeed given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So a few things before I begin. I want to just reiterate again how grateful I am to be here. How grateful I am for the time that you extended to me to prepare myself for this ministry. I also really love the fact that you're not afraid to sing. And that says a lot about a congregation, truly. That you're outgoing, that you're loving, that you will tell me how you feel. And over the next few months, I'm really hoping to get to know of you better. Um, I'm working on faces and names, so if I don't have your name down, please don't be offended. Um, I will I will get it. I had a couple of them. I had a couple of them. I knew Bob at least. <laughs> Bob, Bob made himself memorable um, in the best of ways. But I'm just grateful for the chance to get to know you, and I'm going to be calling you, and if I'm not calling you fast enough, please call me. I want it to be a reciprocal relationship where we get to know each other and forge our bonds in Christ. So if you have not yet read my letter in the hands and feet, the new name of the newsletter, please do so because I will be introducing myself more to you, especially in the next coming weeks. So one thing that you need to know about me is I am a late bloomer when it comes to taking down the Christmas decorations. I don't know if some of you are the same, but in a few days I will be taking down the Christmas tree, packing up the ornaments, removing the crash and Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus from the bookshelf and bid them farewell for another year. For me, it's a sad time when Christmas comes to a close. I use every excuse I can to extend it. Technically, it's still Christmas on the liturgical calendar. It's the 12 days of Christmas, after all. I've got to leave the tree up after the first of the year for good luck. <laughs> the decoration I think I miss most throughout the year are Christmas lights. I love that soft, comforting, warm glow of the Christmas lights, and I have ever since I was a little girl. And I loved how many of them I got to see in the different parts of the country and the different kinds of trees and landscapes that were decorated, things I had never seen before as I made my way to you from New York. So perhaps this is why 
I leave the tree with the lights and the ornaments up until the very last minute. I leave them up to hold on to a bit of the Christmas experience for just a little longer. Of course, these are important symbols that speak to us of the Christmas story, but we know that they are not the whole story. So as the holiday season passes us and we begin a new year, what will we tell of the Christmas story once all those symbols have been packed up and put away? In today's Gospel, John is telling us the Christmas story, but now the symbols are gone from view. He tells the story without the angels, without the shepherds, without the wise men in the manger. He tells it in a language that we can all understand if we read it closely enough in a few times, perhaps. Images that speak to us, to all of us today in our world. He tells it in terms of darkness and light. John tells us of darkness in the world, a darkness that exists. So let's talk a little bit about darkness this morning. I think maybe when a lot of you hear the word darkness, you might think of Psalm 23, which says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So John acknowledges this same darkness that is in our world. And his telling of the Christmas story and throughout his gospel, he recognizes that the darkness does remain in the world. Yet one does not need to walk in the darkness because Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has come to illuminate and light up the world for us. The good news of Christmas. So Jesus said in John chapter 8, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will not be walking in the dark, but will have the light of life. And yet still the darkness exists around us, but Christ has come to shine in the darkness and overcome it. Several years ago, when I was doing a chaplaincy internship in seminary, I was doing it at a hospital in Rochester, and I received a request to join a family in the emergency room. This was my first solo call. In fact, to say that I was nervous was an understatement. To make matters even more complicated, but no less meaningful, I was called to pray with this amazingly kind and compassionate Hindu family whose father was diagnosed with a very rare form of blood cancer. His stay at the hospital was a prolonged one. and I visited him almost daily. I started to form a real relationship with him and the family, especially his daughter, Nita. So as his health declined, I have never seen more tubes and wires and hookups in one person. It was shocking, frightening. But we are called to be the light in the world, so I kept showing up. I saw how much of an emotional toll the father's illness was taking on Nita, and when I came for visits, her father was often asleep and my ministry was with her. We talked about life, death, theology, the interconnectedness of all things through a similar divine source of creation. For simplicity's sake, we called the Creator God. After her father passed away, I saw her one last time, and I will never forget our conversation. Nita talked about the presence of God in her own words, her perception of the absence of God within her life as she watched her father 
rapid, rapidly decline in his illness and eventually die. And then she said, I discovered that God wasn't absent at all. God was with me in my grief, comforting me and my father and my mother. It's just that I was wearing the blinders called fear that kept me from seeing them. So sometimes we are blinded from seeing the light for a host of reasons. Grief, pride, anxiety, and fear over the unknown, especially the future. The word blinders called fear will always stick with me. It's so true, so relatable. Poet Anne Weems writes in her work, Kneeling in Bethlehem, too often our answers to the darkness is not running towards Bethlehem, but running away. We ought to know by now that we can't see where we're going in the dark. Running away is rampant. Separation is stylish. Separation from mates, from friends, from self. Run and tranquilize it. Don't talk about it. Avoid. Run away and join the army of those who have already run away. When are we going to learn that Christmas peace comes only when we turn and face the darkness? The light, only then we'll be able to see the light of the world. So there's a question for us. When will we learn? Advent and Christmas have come and gone for another year. And soon those decorations will be packed up and put away or thrown away if they haven't been already. And what have we learned? What have we experienced? How will we tell the Christ story and share it with others? One day in the intensive care unit, I visited with Nita's father when he was awake. We talked about this darkness, this light, this sharing of our testimony. And he talked very candidly about everything. He expressed how fearful he was of facing the literal darkness in the coming night when your fate and destiny are being controlled by machines and others. And he talked about how faith, his faith, and trust in the Creator was the only thing that could calm his fears. I learned a lot from him. And with his permission, I read to him the words of one of my favorite hymns, O come, O come, Emmanuel, you probably sang it during Advent. It's a special focus on verse 3. O come, thou day spring from on high, and cheer us by thy drawing nigh. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and death's dark shadows put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to thee, O Israel. And after we prayed, he asked me to anoint him with oil that I had brought with me from Palestine, and I did. And that was the last time I saw him before he passed away. Emmanuel, God with us, the light that shines in the darkness cannot overcome it so strong that even people of other faiths and religious traditions can see it. So today, may we receive the light of Christ in our hearts and in our lives. May we receive it through God's word that comes to us today. And upon receiving, go and tell with John the Christmas story. Tell it to a world that needs to hear it. Tell it to a world that needs the light to shine in the darkness. Tell them darkness will not overcome it. And God's people said, Amen. Amen.